Hi everyone, this is Joe Rebello, known to many of you on the internet and in the martial arts world as Kenpo Joe. I wanted to go over an interesting topic today that I was, as I was going through my vast martial arts museum of uh, material, um, I thought this would be an interesting topic to discuss with people on YouTube, Facebook, and other social media. So I'm going to be posting this on several of the Facebook pages and of course on YouTube as well. The topic is very interesting in relationship to America and martial arts, and that is foam dipped sparring gear in the history of American martial arts. Now, first and foremost, uh, back in the 1970s, a uh, Korean martial arts master from Maryland, Jun Ri, formulated, again, Washington, D.C. specifically, he put together a series of sparring gear. And he came up with the use of Ensolite. It was a particular version of foam rubber that could be dipped and then formed to make sparring gear. Now, way back when, the first sparring gear was called the Safety Punch. And uh, the Safety, S-A-F, then space T, gear. And again, the Safety Punch was the first one that was ever made. Um, I can't, you can't discuss the use of safety punch in this country in karate tournaments without specifically mentioning one particular female martial artist, and that was Linda Denley. Linda Denley wore those for years and years in the open tournament circuit. Uh, again, I'm hoping that she will contact me and we can discuss it a little bit more in detail so I could give you more background regarding it. But she was the first person to really wear, and it looked like this conical garb that came up and just flattened out into a fist. And it was held together by basically glorified elastic bands, which in some instances looked like shoelaces. But she was the first one who really wore it predominantly. Now, from that point, we went from the safety punch to the next action, the safety chop. And here we have, again, as you can see, now it may be backwards. My apologies if it is with the screen. But again, safety chop. And uh, as you can see here, again, with the uh, mushroom-shaped opening for the fingers and the thumb, uh, it was designed that you slipped your hand through it. Now, this is a really small hand gear, so I'm not going to try to destroy this hand gear by sliding my hand through it. But you basically slipped your thumb through this uh, band. And this was a really elastic band. This is fairly hard material, meaning it's not going to just stretch. And what would happen is a lot of times the foam rubber would tear at these given points when people clutching their fist in. But it was designed that you could do open hand strikes while wearing this. And again with the protection here, the additional padding on the front of the knuckles. And as you can see, and uh, what size are we looking at? Small and medium way back in the day. I know this is backwards. I don't know why. I'll fix it later. But for now, I just want to show you. These are the safety chops from the mid-1970s. Now, we had safety chop, we had safety foot. Now, the safety foot, I've got the safety kick, I should actually say. Um, this is a slightly later version. This is a child's, I actually found this in Savers. And again, you can see the bands here. That Again, you would slide your big toe through one and your other four toes through the other. And again, you can see this is a later logo. This is, a, let me move right there, the later logo from Junri. And look, shoelaces, that's right, shoelaces to tie your gear together. Pretty wild, huh? But that's how this gear was back in the 1970s into the early to mid 80s. Now, besides the hand gear and the foot gear, uh, the next section was the uh, decoratively called the safety face. Now, as you can see, this is a full, again, a little dirty. I should have cleaned them up before the, uh, the uh, dissertation here, but it was something that just kind of moved me on the spot. So again, you had a uh, tongue back here that would slide your head through. And I really don't want to wreck that tongue right there. Want, but again, you can see the additional padding here. You can see the cord across here. At one point, they actually had a three-pronged plastic, black plastic guard for additional protection of your face. And you would slide your chin in here. Should I try it? Yeah, I'll give it a shot. And again, you would strap across the back of the headgear like so. Wow, that actually still fits. That's amazing. 
Not bad for something from, uh, and it didn't rip. And that was very, that was very common, that it would tear at these two major points when you tried to put your headgear on and off several times. But uh, again, cheekbone protection and openings for uh, allowing the, 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 the skin to breathe, for lack of a better term. And uh, that's the safety face from the 1970s. Pretty interesting gear for its time. Now, as time went on, um, oh, we, that's right. We can't, we can't forget the ever popular, what do you use for body protection back then? Mr. Rebello, as I search and look around, where is it, where is it, where is it? Ah, here it is. The safety rib. Now, uh, this one doesn't have the name on it. I believe this might be a, a knockoff of the commonly safe rib. But as you can see, there were two ties that you slid through there. And you pulled them through here. And it was an actual loop that you would loop the cord around to pull it in tighter and hold it in place. The safety rib. So, as time went on, other companies jumped on the bandwagon in regards to that. There was companies like Protec. <coughs> Excuse me. Unfortunately, not Corona. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't have any Protec gear handy with me. But um, that was one of the other major companies. Um, another one that became very popular was Macho. Macho from Florida. Um, macho doesn't mean being macho. It's Ma and Cho, a husband and wife team that put together the, the uh, Macho company. Uh, Macho has put out men still in existence to this day, as many of you know, one of those popular companies. A good friend of mine's Christine Banner Rodriguez, or Kiss Christine Rodriguez, is one of the spokespeople for Macho and has been for many years. And um, when I look at Macho, again, um, the classic gear that you would see, again, elaborating upon that and adding the element of Velcro. Now, Velcro onto the wrist to hold the gear in place. Um, one of the most, two things that I've always liked, two particular items that Macho created that I always loved was the Macho Bodyguard. And uh, for those of you who have ever seen the Red Man gear that's used, or the blue version of it, um, the full body armor gear, when they made the chest gear that came up around, it strapped on the side, that was like the coolest thing in the world if you, if you wanted body armor. You know, if you wanted foam dip body armor, that was one of the best things to get because... Before that, after the safety rib, we had the safety chest, which again, similarly wrapped, wrapped through and by Velcro. Velcro, right? And you would wrap it around, and this was, the, this was an adult-sized one. And as you can see from the AD on the back and the little warning, uh, again, gave some holes for ventilation and again, you would strap one around your neck and strap around, around your back to hold the gear in place. Well, after that, uh, what came along was, uh, again, Macho's Red Man body armor. And before they did the whole Red Man outfit, it was just that back in the mid-1980s. I had one in 1985. I wish I, could, I wish I'd had one hand to, dem to show you. Uh, it really, in my opinion, it was one of, one of the greatest body gears I'd ever seen in, in foam-dipped gear. I wish they still offered it separately. Uh, again, as we showed you before, there was uh, the safety head, the head gear, the hand gear, uh, the body armor, and of course the foot gear, and then later on, shin gear. Now, Macho did a unique innovation that I always personally enjoyed. Now, let's show you that here. I'm not showing you a pair, but I'll have to show you one. But it was the combination shin guard and foot gear all attached as one piece. Now, later on, um, Jun Ri would come up with a variation on with a forearm guard and a fist combination as well. But I always liked this particular item because you didn't have to buy shin guards and foot gear separately. You could buy it combined. Some people had problems with it breaking and, and tearing at this particular point. But I always liked this particular item. As you can see, the bottom wore out uh, over, over, year, over the decades. Now, that old decades. You can, I'm really dating myself by showing this and there's going to be some martial arts go, hey, I remember that back in the day. And then you know you're officially old. But that's a combination foot gear and shin guard from Macho. I always thought it was a great device. Or a great, great piece of sparring gear. Uh, another important feature I want to talk about, there's another company that was run by a good friend of mine, Mike Bedansky. 
and Mike Badansky and Steve Bess, who trained with Bob Cheesick and Tung Soo Do in Connecticut. Um, again, Mr. Badansky came up with a great company, Shihan. Shihan said it's a unique, innovative sparring gear, and I want to talk about a couple of things that they created. Um, one of the things I always thought was cool is uh, when we look at sparring gear, and uh, just searching around, as it were, to, to pull out these different items that I'm talking about, and I did bring it down here with me, didn't I? Oh, by the way, before I forget, um, ah, it's another safety face in red. And again, same strap. I don't know how I missed it, but there it is, a red safety face from the 1970s. I know there are going to be certain martial arts going, geez, Joe, you got them in still pretty good shape. Either, either you didn't spar or you got it from somebody who probably quit real early in their martial arts training. The latter, not the former. But, um... We talk about Shihan, and uh, the cool things about Shihan, they, they did something that was really interesting at the time. Uh, they combined colors. I, I love the additional color dipping with this. I always thought it was wicked cool when I saw it. Wicked cool. You can tell from Massachusetts. And I always thought the, com the color combinations were, were just awesome. I, I, you know, I'm looking around here. I know I, I know I have a shin guard in this color combination as well. Because, ah, there we are. The shin guard. And again, I always thought the color combination, by the way, give credit to Mike Badansky. Let's turn it this way. Shihan. I know it's backwards. I know, but it's still Shihan. Not, she, not backwards when I see it. But uh, I always like this. I always like the, dip, the color combination. Now, um, he also jumped on the, uh, the safety face. Jumped on the face? Not. By adding in a great color combination here. And I'm going to put this one on because this was made for me and it fits. He, uh, he, in, he, he sewed the straps. Oh, did he sew them? Well, they were Velcro. No, it's still Velcro. Was, what? Did he? Yeah, they were still Velcro. But um, the cool part about this, stretch it out. And you got to love the color combination, the black and the red. Every once in a while, I'll see one of these show up. Um, I saw a set of hand gear with the black with the red, and I thought that was cool. I tried to get it from a person in Connecticut on Facebook Marketplace, of all places. Do I sound really silly talking out of this? Hold on. But these were cool. And it, again, stood the test of time. I used to spy and wear this, and uh, it, it's still durable. Thank you. Thank you, Mike Badansky. Um, one of the wildest things that Mike created, and I call him Mike. Mike is my friend. Uh, was, and this was really wild. With the popularity of Jurassic Park, was it really around that time? My gosh, amazing. We had an incredible, innovative creation that he made, which was, for those of you who may remember it and will smile heartily, and Mike, somewhere Mike's watching this and chuckling to himself, that had to be Raptor Gear. Remember Raptor Gear? I don't know how he did it. Hopefully one day, you know, now that now that Shihan is, is no longer with us, but Mike is, um, he'll discuss about that, how he created this. But it's this wild bubble effect. Look at these things. Isn't that wild? And of course, ventilation. But it, it was a wild looking apparatus. Hey. And of course, if you really want to complete your raptor look, you had to get the raptor headgear. Now this is what's from my children. If I put this, if I try to put this thing on my head, I don't, well, it's not that bad. Okay, it's that bad. But this was a really wild design and kids picked it right up. They loved it. So that's the legacy of, uh, and of course, everyone knows Shihan gear around that time. Why? Because Mike Badansky was fortunate enough that his product would be featured each and every episode of American Gladiators. And you go back and you watch those old episodes of American Gladiators. They're wearing Shihan headgear. That was quite a coup. I hope Mike the Badansky does what I do with this and puts a podcast or, or just, I should, a video out on how we put it all together. I think it would be really cool. So that, that's some of the apparatus. As we go on, as time goes on, of course, we now deal with, of course, uh, uh, things like Asian World of Martial Arts Thunder Gear, which again around the head, wraps around the back. I always wish it were a little larger, even as I'm getting smaller. I always like this design. I have it in black. I have it in red. Um, I've always liked it. You know, I, I highly recommend chest protectors. And now chest protectors are all the norm in karate tournaments. They're required for children's divisions. I think that's an incredible idea. 
Uh, another thing we want to talk about, and this actually is also from uh, Pro Pro uh, again Remax. Is it Remax or Promax? Promax, which is part of Remax. This was the last incarnation that Junry did, and again we see the classic uh, whoop, Pro Max and the Remax Shield. And um, the big thing that we added on here was additional pads for protection across the front of the forehead, on the ears, and on the back of the head. And again, that black and red motif. I know, Joe, you got a trend going on here. But you strap it in with your Velcro and spar. Great. Um, as that went on, more and more people would add additional pads to the front and the back of the skull and the ears and whatnot. Uh, again, here's another shining example from uh, the aforementioned we talked about, Macho. Okay, maybe I should stretch that out a little better before. Let's see. Oh, ooh, hey, oh. Warrior gear. Now, I always love it, again, additional padding in the front. I love the kind of Superman-ish kind of uh, triangle. Put a little Superman logo there, right? Uh, again, the additional ear and side protection. And the triangular, it could be an upside down Superman logo or a pyramid or what have you. We, we used to have decals. There were decals you could put on these things. And it's still available to this day. I know I used to have a Kempo Karate logo. I stuck it on the back of my head, my, my, my white gear, so I would be able to identify it. Of course, that made an additional target. But it was really cool having it. And again, that additional padding is so important. You know? And of course, uh, nowadays, as I search for it, you know, we looked at uh, other companies such as Century with the Century gear. And again, the frontal pad, ear protection additional. In this case, three points of protection here. And additional protection in the back. And um, again, with the striking uh, uh, gear, the hand gear, the foot gear, though, and shin guards as well, you have additional protection. And actually, also additional reach to hit someone, by the way. But uh, again, I, I find it very innovative. Again, this is the P2 line. And again, the biggest problem I always found was the Velcro. And I learned the answer to, to deal with the Velcro as it, as it stretched out. You just trimmed it, moved that little Velcro pad a little closer up, and bang, you fixed the Velcro if it was too loose for you. Well, and of course, we've got to talk about what the other innovations in, in the history of us. Uh, we talked about Macho creating the the T in the conventional sparring gear. And again, being able to slide your hand through, your two middle fingers went through the center of it, your other two fingers enabled you, again, to grab someone, to keep your hands open, reach out and grab, hold someone and strike. And of course, oh, missed the thumb lock, and that thumb tap. But, uh, I hope you've enjoyed my uh, my short dissertation into the history of sparring gear uh, in the United States. Of course, I haven't gone through every company. I haven't gone. There are many different friends of mine, like Whistle Kick, a friend of mine. He puts out sparring gear. Uh, of course, Macho, Century are still very much Asian world. All three of those companies are still in existence, putting out their gear. Europe has since jumped on the bad wagon with Blitz and, and different companies that put out their own forms. Of course, Top 10 in Europe as well have their own particular forms of foam dip gear. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of this. I hope many of my friends in martial arts will, will respond and comment on this. Uh, if you're on YouTube, put a like, subscribe to my channel. <coughs> <coughs> Still no Corona. And check it out. This is Joe Rebello, known to many of you in the martial arts world and the internet as Kenpo Joe. Keep training. And as always, Joe, push the button.